Tom covered how to skip animations in Storyline 360. All right. So if you go to the resource page, I'm just going to, because I want to give props to Ewan who did this. So go to the resource page. You're going to see the information here. Ewan's a good guy to follow on LinkedIn. He shares a lot of accessibility tips. And, and then he actually shared this the other day in YouTube. And he spoke more about accessibility and why you'd want to do that for accessibility. But I just thought, in general, his tip was really good. So we're gonna we're just gonna look at the skip animation part of his tip. But uh, I'd connect with him on LinkedIn and then you know follow his YouTube channel because he's got a lot of good accessibility content in there. If you follow him on LinkedIn, just tell him Tom sent you, so he's not wondering why all these people are like starting to click on his LinkedIn profile. All right, so uh, let's let's look at what we're gonna do here. Actually, I'd watched his tip, and then I then that evening I was watching uh, a show on Netflix, and then there was uh, you know they have like the skip intro, and so you know a lot of times you have those long openings on these these videos, right? Or you might have these ads on YouTube or different services, and you're going God. I don't want to sit through all of this. So you skip the ad or you skip the intro and you get to the core, the start of the show or the core subject or whatever you're watching, right? A lot of times we do that in training. We have these animations or openings or things that may not necessarily be critical to the course or we build on it. And then by the end of the slide, you get to the content anyway, so you're progressively building on that. So let's look at, I just put together some junky animation slide. So if we look at this slide, you know, you might have something like this where there's just a bunch of stuff. This could be content coming on the screen as well, right? But this is just, a, you know, superfluous. People are probably thinking, well, I, I just gonna take this training. Now I've got to sit there and watch all this animation. But what they really need to get to is this information at the end. So in Ewan's tip, he showed why, you know, the animation could interfere with some of the accessibility considerations. And ultimately, he then showed a way to jump to the end of the slide. But I think it's just a good way. If, if, if you're progressively building your content and you want people to give them the option to kind of skip that and get to, like, just the content itself, because they can read faster than we can talk, right? you may want to make that available to them. So what we would do is have a way for them to skip all this, this animation stuff. So a couple of considerations before we talk about that. If you go in your player, so if you go down to your slide properties right here, right? On the, on the slide, you can add a seek bar. So you'd have this drop down here. Normally it's like player default. So you click the drop down. You could add a seek bar at the slide level or on the player across all the slides. And if we preview this, if you don't lock the seek bar, that's one way you can allow people to skip animations and then they can just scrub through it, right? I kind of like that because you they may want to see something. Like this case, the, this is obviously just a goofy stuff, but the seek bar allows them to kind of scrub through as long as you don't lock it down. And so that's one way you can uh, skip to the, the core information. The other thing you could do is what um, Ewan did is he just created, let me just go to the scene here. Let's go ahead and preview this scene. What Ewan did is he just created a, like you could be in the middle of the animation, like the skip ads, and you can skip animation, and then you get just to the end, right? Or you could do something at the front end of the slide, which I think he then I'll explain how he did his, and you can watch his video. You can have a true-false variable, and you can say, do you want to have the animations on or do you want to have it off? And this way, you could skip animations on all the slides going forward if you wanted to allow that. And so you just have a button, a toggle button, that you could change the variable. And then based on the value of the variable, so if the animations are on, that means, or off, true, false, right? That's going to determine if the animation is going to play. So click here, the animations are playing, right? And click it again. I come here and you can see the animations don't play. So let's talk about 
what's going on here. So when you have the animation, the, the basic thing you're going to do is just skip to a different point in the timeline. So what we're going to do here, if we look at this one, this is where I just have, this could be like you have in YouTube, right? You can have like a skip ad button, right? Basically, uh, what we're doing here, there's a few ways you can do it. You can, you can create a cue point. And to create a cue point on the timeline, uh, let's just go and build this from scratch. So we have a timeline here. And I want to skip past the animation. So if I, if I take my playhead and I start dragging it, I can see how the animations build. Right? And I can say, OK, the animations end at this point. So if I want to have the time, if I want to have everything jump to this point, I could create a trigger, trigger to jump to that point in the timeline. What I like to do is I like to use a cue point, and because the cue point, I can nudge it if I want it, if I want to move it versus having to go back into the trigger and then changing the time I chose. So I'm going to go ahead, move my playhead here. And to add a cue point, there's two ways to do it. You can right click. And you could see it says create cue point at the playhead. The other thing you can do is you can just hit the letter C. And then you can see it creates, like I'll move it here, put another one. You can see it creates a cue point when you uh, hit the letter C. So I've got a cue point. And again, when I create a trigger to the cue point, if I find I want to nudge it, I can do that. If I create a trigger based on like jumping to 18 seconds, for example, and I need it to go to 19 seconds, then I have to go back into the trigger and change the time, which isn't a big deal. But if it's the cue point, then I can just nudge the cue point. I'm going to get rid of the cue point, just right click. And you can see delete cue point. So I got rid of this one. So we have this cue point one right here. And all we want to do is we're going to just create a trigger to jump past to that cue point. So I'm just going to open up my trigger wizard. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? I'm just going to say, well, let's 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 put a button on here. So let's go ahead and insert a button. Right uh, here. Let's insert a button. And we'll just say skip on here. It's always good to title things. So we'll call this, I do BTN and skip. So I know it's a button. All right. So I've got my button right here. And of course, you know, I can see the button got inserted where the playhead was at. So I just, I'm just going to have the button on the entire slide. And what I want to do is just put a trigger on this button. So I'm going to go to the trigger panel. What do I want to do? I want to jump to this cue point when I click the button. So click on what do I want to do? It's always good if you're brand new to, with Storyline, it's always good to talk through the triggers. So I'm going to go jump to, uh, where is it at here? Jump to time or cue point. You can see I can put time on here. I'm going to do cue point. So we're going to do cue point one when the user clicks this button skip. Hit OK. If I preview this slide, and it just jumped to the end to that point. If you don't want to use a cue point and you know the slide is static, then what you can do is you can just jump to the end of the slide because it's it's essentially kind of the same thing. So what we would what we would do here is let's change this trigger here, and I'm going to say instead of jump to time. I'm going to say jump to, there's a jump to time, end of timeline. And you can see there's other options, right? Jump forward, backward. So we're going to do jump to end of timeline on this slide. Hit OK. So that's just going to jump to the end of the timeline. As long as I don't have a trigger to leave the slide, then that's going to work as well. So we're going to preview this. And it just jumped to the end of the slide. So this tip works really well if you want to allow them. And it works really because you can jump to any point in the timeline, right? So this works really well if you have like a sequence of builds or animations that you don't necessarily need to have, right? You can give the person the option to skip those things. If you watch Ewan's video, he talks a lot more about the accessibility and the screen readers. So you can see that there's a real good rationale for skipping animations like that. If you're doing a progressive build, 
and you have somebody who's maybe an expert and so they just need to get to the content and might not need all the context you could at the front of the course you could say you know are you an expert say yes when they do that maybe that controls those animations and then that lets them get through the content a little bit faster so if you're doing like compliance training or something like that so if you wanted to do something like that uh, if you look at this one here what I have is at the front end, so this could be at the beginning of the course, you're gonna have a button that you can toggle on and off. And essentially, you're just gonna create a true false variable. I'll show you how to do that. And then you click the button, it's going to change the variable. And then that's going to change whether the audio or the animation plays because we're gonna have a trigger on there. So let's look at what we have here. So if you wanna create a variable, I won't get into all the details of variables, but if you want to create a variable, you come up here and you're just going to create a variable. You click the plus icon. You're going to, here, here would be your variable name. I like to name it so it makes sense contextually. So skip animation, right? And then you're going to use a true false. So it's either going to be true or false. So it's like binary, right? And then uh, you just set your default value. So that's what we have here. We have a skip animation. And then you can see I just have the, value is false. I don't want to skip the animation so by default. So then once I got my variable and I just put a reference down here, I'll show you how to put a reference. When you're working with variables, it's always good to have a reference so you can see that things are happening. So like if we preview this, I want to make sure this is changing. So I put a reference here just so I can see that it's changing. When I publish the course, I would hide this, right? I don't want this on the screen. But this just lets me see that's actually working. So I'm not spending too much time. So put a reference on there. That's pretty easy. You're just gonna, gonna I just do control T. That opens up the text box. And I'll put, you know, animations or whatever I'm trying to trying to figure out if the variable's changing or not. Then you come up here, you go to insert, and you're gonna go to reference. And that'll have a list of all your variables. In this case, we'll just insert that. And then you can see it inserted the variable and the current value. And you can see as I mouse over it, it's going to show me that. So that's just kind of a bonus tip if you've never worked with variables. All right. And then again, if I were going to publish this, then some people take this, they move it off screen. I usually would just hide it. So there's my reference, right? I usually just hide it. Couple of things I do with this, I might move it all the way down to the bottom. I'll lock it so that I don't move it around. And then well, I gotta, gotta hide it here and then lock it. And then this way I don't accidentally engage it or whatever. But then when I come back and redo the course, I might open that up and then I can I have all those references. I don't have to rebuild those. So the, the thing is you're not keeping that on the screen. So now what we do is we just have a button here and then there's a few ways you can create a toggle button. I'll just show you the way Ewan did it since I'm referencing his video. And what we're going to do is we, we have this button here and we're going to adjust the variable. So we're, you know, it's a true false variable. It's either going to be on or off, right? So we're going to adjust the variable. That's what we want to do. So we select our variable and we're going to set the skip animation to the value of true when the user clicks button one. And then I kind of did it the way Ewan did it because I figured some people would go back to the video. And then if skip animation is equal to the value of false, otherwise just keep it at false or set it to false. So there's a few different ways to build toggles, but since I'm referencing his video, I did it the way he did. I would probably do the toggle a little bit different. And there's plenty of toggle videos. That's David's inside joke with me because he says I'm always going to do a toggle uh, quick tip. but so basically what we're doing is if you look at this, we're going to adjust this variable when I click this. So it's going to change it to true. If it's false, it's going to change it to true. Otherwise, if it's false, it's going to keep it at false. So it's going to toggle between true and false. And so that's what's happening here. So when I click on the button, if it's currently false, it's going to change it to true. But if it's not false, it's going to change it back to false. So you've got your 
your toggle here. Now that I have a toggle, the person at the beginning of the course can say, I want to skip all my animations. And that's where like the accessibility consideration could come in. So skip animations, they can say, you know, or it should be animations on or off, right? You want to title this differently, maybe. But we're going to, I'd probably say skip animations should be the name of the variable. So then skip animations true. So then I would know when I get to my slide, when the slide starts, we have a trigger here that says jump to the end of the time or to that cue point, end of the timeline. When the timeline of the slide starts, so when the slide loads, if this value is a certain value. So you can see uh, skip animation is set to true. So that means I want it to skip. And so when the timeline starts, it's true, it's gonna skip. So we can we can test that. So right now it's false, right? So we're gonna preview this. I go to the next slide. Oops, I guess I have to preview the entire scene here. I go to the next slide. Here you can see it's false. I go to the next slide, the animations come on, right? Come back here. I'm going to turn it off. So when I get to the next slide, the slide's going to load. It's going to evaluate that trigger. The trigger saying to skip the animations if this is set to true. And you can see it just skipped to the end of the slide. It's I probably over-talked it, but it's a relatively simple tip. But I thought it was very clever because one is a reminder of the ability to skip through the timeline or jump to points in the timeline. But you know, when you look at Ewan's video and talks about accessibility and he demonstrates some stuff with the screen reader, you can kind of see why, okay, you know, I don't really build a lot of accessible content, but maybe I need to consider this for people who are using screen readers or different assistive uh, technology. So I'd recommend watching his video because he gives a really full overview of that. But I thought the tip in general. The ability like to skip ads or or skip the intro, I think that's kind of a nice feature to build into that. Or at the front end, you could use it, you know, maybe there's people who are beginning learners and there are people who are more tenured learners for like annual training. And then you could say, are you tenured? Yes. And then from that point on, you could skip to certain types of content. Maybe you, you put the beginner content up front and the back end of the slide has more tenured or everything's kind of wrapped up. So a lot of different ways you can use that. Hopefully this works for you. Play around with that. There's a lot of different features in there, the triggers, the value, the variables, the animations, a lot of things that you can kind of combine these, these different features to do some neat things.